What is going on, investors? How's it going? Another stock analysis. This time we're going to take a look at Nikola Corporation, Nikola Motors, ticker symbol NKLA. I've had at least a dozen people have me want to look at this stock, and we'll see if they want me to analyze this after we take a look at what's going on here. Now, first things first, we see in the regular session, the stock actually traded up nicely, about six and a half percent. And we see in the after hours, the stock is sold off after it reported what is referred to as earnings, although this, this company is kind of pre-revenue, although they, they have a little bit of revenue, um, but they're mainly uh, reinvesting or they're kind of investing for the future here as they gear up for production. It looks like late next year, they're going to start developing and, and producing uh, the, the their actual product. So uh, what I would guess is in this regular session, this is actually short sellers. In my opinion, this is short sellers probably covering their position, not wanting to be exposed to this stock in the after hours when they report that I think is a very, very smart thing. When you have quote unquote press release companies like Nikola Motors, where they don't really have a product yet, they don't have any revenue, they don't really have any profit, but they could come out with a press release that could drive this stock up. And so I think wisely uh, short sellers were covering their position that drove the stock up. And as we see in the after hours, this stock is selling off pretty rapid here at about 10% a clip. Now I'm sure in the comment section, I'm going to get uh, so many comparisons to Tesla. One thing I wanted to point out about Tesla. Let's take a look at the 52 week range here, guys. We went from $211 per share. This stock traded at $211 per share. Obviously right now it's a lot higher than that. It, it got up to $1,800 per share and now it's at about $1,500 a share. But one thing I want to point out about these companies like Tesla and Beyond Meat and, and these high flying Virgin Galactic you could have got Tesla for $211 per share. Guess when Tesla traded for $211 per share? Oh, you know, just about six or seven years ago. So you literally could have paid the same price for Tesla after they've come out with the Model 3, the Model X, the Model Y, bought a solar company, done all this stuff. You could have got it for the same price as people that bought it years and years ago. Guys, they don't give out Academy Awards. They don't give out Grammys or ESPYs for buying into these speculative stocks early. You can wait. Okay, yes, has this stock gone parabolic? But look how long it traded sideways. It traded sideways for about six years here. Okay, there is no award for jumping in here early. This stock is going to bounce around just like Tesla did. And like I said, earlier this year, you could have bought Tesla shares for $211, the same price you literally could have got this stock for uh, seven, six to seven years ago. Okay, so that's the first thing to understand. Second thing to understand is we are in a roaring bull market, guys. This is one of the biggest and longest economic expansions we've ever seen. You literally could have just invested in Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Netflix, and Alphabet, and you'd be up hundreds and hundreds of percent. In my opinion, in a roaring bull market, coming here and trying to gamble on companies that uh, are pre-revenue, pre-profit, to me is a gamble that you don't necessarily have to take. Now, if you're looking for a video where I talk about what kind of products they have, I really don't care, okay? This is a company, I'm sure they're gonna produce these. I'm sure they're gonna be great. I'm sure they're gonna be revolutionary and things like that, but that is different from an investment. We see here they missed by 2%. They did complete, uh, looks like they completed build out or they're almost done with a build out in Germany. It looked pretty nice, I saw that. They're breaking some ground in Arizona here in the United States. It looks like they've got a capacity to do about 30 35,000 trucks per year. And that's at full capacity on two shifts. And so phase one, actually, this is interesting. Phase one of this construction is expected to be completed Q4 2021. So we're looking at over a year from now. That's just phase one. I don't know how many phases they've got. That could be why this stock is selling off just a little bit. Let's jump into the numbers here. We've got three months ended here in June. We got six months ended here in June. The top line really doesn't matter. They've got these solar revenues. These are in thousands. This is 36,000. Okay. I'm sure some of you watching actually made more money than Nikola Motors over the last three months, myself included. I have businesses that have done way more than 36. 000. 
I've got businesses to do 36,000 in a month, let alone in three months. So this is an insignificant stuff. I'm not saying to just look past it. It, it, it certainly created a base for, for this company to kind of go public and kind of build off of. Now, more importantly here, we've got research and development that has gone up. We went from a uh, call 11.9 all the way up to close to $43 million. We've got selling in general and administrative. What are they selling and wh what are they administrating here? We see that is all that's higher than R and D to me. That's a red flag that they're not selling anything They're They're, they don't really need to be doing a whole lot right now other than developing their product and building out a facility. Maybe part of this selling general administrative is part of a build out. That's possible, but that is very, it's higher than R and D to me. That's a little bit of a red flag. We see here is far more, you know, look back in 2019, the company was a lot different then. Uh, but it, you know, it's, it's, to me, this stands out as a red flag. Uh, total operating expenses, 86 million. Again, this compares to a gross profit of, I think that's six thousand dollars i'm not used to seeing such a uh, low number so we've got a loss from operation here of about 80 call that 87 million dollars you come down here to a net loss contributed to you the shareholder we're at a hundred million dollars for the quarter not for a year not for five years for the quarter we're at a hundred million dollar loss that's 33 cents per share now here's if you take anything from this video you are going to be diluted into outer space with a company like Nikola Motors. Take a look. Last year, you had 260 million shares. That is up 40 million shares, over 40 million shares to $303 million. If you think this is going to stop, it is not. It is going to keep going up and up and up. Now, cash assets. So they lost 100 million in a quarter. Again, they're still a little ways from their product. We'll give them credit for that. June 30th here. So we got a six month view. We were here at uh, December, uh, December to June. So we've got a three month view. Obviously, they've raised some money. We know they lost hundred million from operation. This all comes from shareholder raising money by selling the shares of the stock. Cash and cash equivalents is close to 700 million. So this is a company that has plenty of a runway to get them into 2021 again, but I would anticipate this cash burn actually to accelerate. I wouldn't expect this. I don't think you can annualize out this hundred million. I would assume that next quarter they're going to be producing they're going to be burning through even more cash than 100 million so this 700 million seems like a lot right now but they're going to burn through a, a lot of that so total current assets again most of it is sitting in cash when you don't really have a product or anything like that now long-term deposits here this is in thousands so they have some deposits here but again this is you know we're, we're not talking about massive massive numbers here this is a corporation with a 14 billion dollar we're talking about a 14 billion dollar market cap and they have a, a shade over 10 million dollars in just deposits it looks like so not uh you know you're paying a pretty large large multiple for the deposits as well. On the liability side, it's going to be pretty clean because they're raising money by issuing shares. They're raising money uh, through the capital markets, which a company like this should be. I'm not blaming that. I'm just telling you as a common shareholder, you bought one Nikola share back here. You were one of 260 million. Now you're one of 303 million. So your odds and, and, and the the product that you get is getting diluted. So from a cash flow perspective, we actually see them burning through similar amounts of cash as they did in the previous period. We see they are paying their employees heavily in stock. So this stock has to stay propped up. So that's one thing that you want to keep in mind is they are paying their their employees with stock. These employees are going to turn around and sell the stock. I don't have it up here, but a lot of insiders from Nikola have been selling. A lot of employees obviously to get paid are going to be selling their stock. And so that's also going to create additional pressures on the stock as well as the dilution. So we've got a negative cash flow here, obviously from financing activities. We've got uh, this pipe financing that they had. They, they raised about 600 million here. They issued these Series D convertible notes here. That That's about $50 million as well. There's more stock options here. They're just basically raising money from issuing stock. And that's, again, this is a young company. It's a concept, it's an idea, it's a hope, and it's a dream. And in a roaring bull market, personally, I think investing in hopes and dreams is a little silly because you've got reality like Amazon 
Microsoft, Netflix, Google, Facebook, those companies are dealing in reality and their stocks are up tremendously. Let's jump over to the stock chart. Take a look here again. This stock is trading off in the after hours, although it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say it's a wash, but it's it's very similar to where it was earlier in the day. So we saw this stock. It ran up here all the way up to $90. This is called Euphoria right here. Look at these big candles. Look, this is just absolute Euphoria. If you bought up in this level, Remember, we are in a roaring bull market and you're buying a company that doesn't even have a, a viable product yet. I'm sorry, you, you, this, you're, you might as well. Vegas is wide open. You can get a, ve- a hotel in Vegas at one of the best casinos there for like $40 a night. I would just take the money there and go gamble because that's basically what you're doing here. Now, if you bought up here, you should have st- set a stop loss somewhere in here, maybe at the top of this candle at 73. Uh, you know, if it broke this candle, which it, the stock ended up doing, it was going to come all the way down. Okay, this candle is just so big and so is this one. Once the stock stock price started trading down below this. It just was going to keep falling. And so here we're at, I see we have some overhead resistance here right at the $40 level. And as we can see, that's really where the stock is. It actually got the, close to that today here. It got right up to the $40 level. It was right at $39.81 and it butt its head. So that's the bottom here is right around 40. And also this candle started at around 40. We also have a couple candles here that hit its head on this $40 level and the stock rejected it. Now it's come up here again. This candle came right up to $40 today and the stock rejected it. So this $40 level, in my opinion, is going to form a little base here, um, and it's going to be tough for this stock to break out above it without some really positive news, some positive press release, which I think this company is capable of doing. They're they're capable of putting out a press release and getting the news out there personally. Um, but as we see here, this stock is in a long-term downtrend. It's peaked up above, just above this trend line. But as we see now, here's the stock here at $35.58. That would put it right about here. Again, we're we're right back on this negative trend line. If this stock starts trading below the $35 level, it is basically confirmed that this downtrend is still intact. It tried to peek its head up here and it got rejected by the market. So for a number of different reasons, you have sellers, you have uh, bag holders up here. There's quite a bit of volume right here. There was a ton of people that bought the shares right in here. As this stock gets closer to these price levels, these shareholders want want out because they see uh, stocks like Amazon, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, Tesla, all these other stocks just roaring to the upside while this stock has been in a free fall essentially when it made its top here. Um, uh, earlier this year, actually just a few months ago. So this stock has fallen from $94 all the way down to $30. So again, I'm not trying to scare anybody off this stock. If you're a long-term holder, by all means, I would just allocate your portfolio uh, accordingly. If you have a $1,000 portfolio, I would only have a share or two of this. If you're overweight, I have I can't tell you how many people comment on my channel and say, I have a significant portion in Virgin Galactic. I have a significant portion in Nikola Motors. And it's like, guys, we are in a roaring bull market where the top four or five stocks are literally accounting for almost all the gains. And if you have no exposure to those stocks, what are you doing buying uh, gambling stocks like this? So take it as a lesson learned. Again, I'm not here to scare you off this stock. If you're a long-term holder, by all means, but again, I had a chart of Tesla up here. I showed you, you could have bought Tesla earlier this year for the same price you could have gotten the stock years and years and years ago. The stock was at $211. This is Tesla, okay? The other point I want to make is Ford, GM, uh, VW, there's been a lot of car makers that people have expected to compete with Tesla. And we're talking about some of the biggest car makers in the entire universe, in the entire world. They can't compete with Tesla. So to think that Nikola is going to rise up and all of a sudden not just compete with Ford, GM, Chrysler, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, they're going to compete with Tesla when no other car maker has even come close to Tesla. No car maker has even come close to Tesla. And again, this stock was at $211 this year, a price you could have gotten the shares back, uh, you know, seven, eight years ago. So you don't necessarily have to come in here and overexpose yourself to this stock. This is a stock that's going to bounce around. It's going to be heavily diluted. 
and uh, you know, forget the fear of missing out. They're going to release plenty of shares on this stock. The stock is going to bounce around. Competitors like Tesla and others are going to enter the market and going to make it tough for a company like this to compete, especially if they don't come to market very, very quickly. And if things don't go smoothly, and if you follow Tesla stock for as long as I have, believe me, things were not always smooth sailing. Hence why this stock basically traded flat for a good six, five, six years before it kind of went parabolic uh, this year. So there we go. There's Nikola Motors. Again, I'm not trying to inviscerate these companies. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you buy stocks like this. This is the investor channel. It's not the I, I you know, it's not the friendship channel. Okay, business is business. It is not personal. Just because I don't like Nikola or I would not buy shares of this doesn't necessarily mean you have to. I'm just giving you my investment philosophy here on the channel. There we go. There's Nikola. We'll keep an eye on this one. Again, it's selling off pretty rapidly in the after hour. You're going to have a ton of short sellers on this stock, and that's what kept a lid on Tesla stock for so long. You're for sure going to see that here, and so that's something you're just going to want to keep in mind. I'm just here trying to educate you guys, especially the newer investors that are overweight companies like this, just trying to give you a little bit of education because these types of things have appeared in the markets over and over and over again in my lifetime. And I'm trying to pass that knowledge down to you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We'll be back again very soon later today with Disney and Beyond Meat and a couple of more. We'll see you then. Good luck with your investments.